Did you hear that Solo, a Star Wars story, bombed at the box office? I was wondering if it's true. That Sesame Street tried to sue Melissa McCarthy's new movie over their marketing campaign? <laughs> what about Jamie Foxx being cast as Spawn in the new Blumhouse production? No? We've got you covered. Welcome to The Cinephiles, a weekly show where we zoom in on the most buzzworthy news Hollywood and the indie scene has to offer. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Talks for The Cinephiles Extended Cut, a weekly discussion show where we break down the week's biggest stories. Link in the description below. Number 3. Jamie Foxx to star as Spawn in new Blumhouse movie. It's been over 20 years since Spawn last hit the big screen, and Blumhouse Productions thinks it has found the perfect actor to take up his mantle. You sent me to hell, Jason! I'm here to return the favor! <laughs> Jamie Foxx has been cast as the titular character and will work with the comic's creator and the film's director, Todd McFarlane, and producer Jason Blum. I'm not worried about my health. I've gotta figure things out. McFarlane will also pen the script and co-produce. Spawn starts off as Lieutenant Colonel Al Simmons, who after saving the president's life in a failed assassination attempt, is recruited by CIA director Jason Wynn to join an important black ops mission. After butting heads with Wynn, the director ordered Wynn's friend and partner to assassinate him, sending him to hell. See you in hell, Al. There, Wynn makes a deal with the demon Malabolgia to live again as an agent of vengeance. If you won't lead my army, then you must die. This won't mark the first time Fox has starred in Superhero Fair, as he played Electro in Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Number 2. Sesame Street Suing Melissa McCarthy's Puppet Movie Over Marketing Campaign The creators of Sesame Street really channeled their inner Oscar the Grouch. Get lost! It all right. The popular IP unsuccessfully tried suing STX Entertainment after the company dropped the first trailer to its rated R puppet film, The Happy Time Murders, which they claimed was an unlawful attempt to deceive and confuse the public into associating it with the most celebrated children's program in history. Hey, handsome. You looking for some rotten cotton? I'm a woman. That's okay. Yeah, that's even better. Got a good time for you. <laughs> According to the Associated Press, a judge in New York dismissed the case, saying there was no proof that moviegoers were actually confused. Sesame Street also claimed that the trailer depicted the Jim Henson like puppets as explicit, profane, drug using, misogynistic, and violent. Welcome. Ironically enough, the Jim Henson Company is actually producing the film, with Jim's son Brian directing. The Happy Time Murders lawyer Fred was ecstatic with the decision, saying, quote, We fluffing love Sesame Street, and were obviously very pleased that the ruling reinforced what STX's intention was from the beginning, to honor the heritage of the Jim Henson Company's previous award-winning creations. The film is set for release August 17th. That is good shit! <laughs> well, f me! Maybe! <laughs> Before we get to our final entry, here are a couple new releases. We need to make sure everything's secure. Right away. I love you. Get below! Oh my God. We're gonna make this place fast and loose. Ah. Every ride, ah. steady go. Every attraction, ah. no rules, no speed limits. Just pure fun. That sounds kind of dangerous. Let's see what this baby can do. Number 1. Solo A Star Wars Story Bombs at the Box Office Apparently Disney can put out a stinker every once in a while. Come on, let's keep a little optimism. No, Han. The odds went against you on this one. Never tell me the odds. The standalone Solo A Star Wars Story was projected to make Disney an estimated $150 million over the four-day Memorial Day weekend. But by the time the long weekend had passed, the latest installment in the galaxy far, far away raked in a disappointing $101 million domestically, well below projections. What do you think? Well, what do you know? So below, in fact, that when adjusted for inflation, the film has become the lowest grossing opening weekend for a Star Wars movie ever, according to Comscore. What about the overseas box office, you ask? Just as bad, with the film only earning a total of $68.2 million over the same period. So glad we took this job! While the box office numbers themselves aren't horrible, they're quite low for a Star Wars movie, and the reviews somewhat mirror that, with a 71% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, I admire anyone who can crawl their way out of a sewer. Especially a sewer as putrid as Corellia. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to our Mojo Talks YouTube channel for the video version of The Cinephiles Extended Cut.